All right, guys, ready for part two of stew crazy? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to make a French beef stew, otherwise known as boeuf bourguignon. And what you're gonna to need to do it is what we have before you, as well as the Mr. Pot over there on the stove. But we're gonna actually cook this in a crock pot. So that's one of the real secrets to what I call the lazy man's gourmet, because what's great about a crock pot is you kind of set it and forget it. But the real secret is knowing how to put all the ingredients together at the right time and place in order to get that melt in your mouth quality that we all want when we're doing any type of a beef stew. So let me take you through the ingredients and then we'll get cooking. Okay, nothing complicated about it. We're gonna need some beef. And what I did was I actually took a beef roast and cubed it up and then I've had it marinating in some mojo overnight. You can also just use some uh, salad dressing because you wanna let that tenderize. We're gonna need some bacon. Gonna need some shrooms, right? And then we're gonna need potatoes, carrots, onion. And we're gonna need a few of these bad boys, garlic cloves, and last but not least, red wine. So, let me show you how to get this thing going. First, we're gonna start whopping and chopping. Okay, to get things started, I'm gonna take a pot about half full of water. I'm gonna put it on the stove and crank up the heat because what we're gonna do is we're gonna parboil the carrots and the potatoes. So that's what we're gonna start with. And beauty of this is you don't even have to wash these bad boys. I mean, you don't even have to peel these bad boys. We just wash them and then we cube them up. And if you don't like the peels, guess what? Once they've parboiled, the peels will slide right off. I'll show you that a little later on. But we're going to do a quick, quick work of a few potatoes here. I'm, I'm using four. These are white russet potatoes. You can also use the uh, red potatoes as well. All right, and I'm just going to go toss these in the pot, and then we're going to do the same thing for the carrots. ends off of these. This will go into my soup bag for later on and then just chunk them up. Try not to chunk up the fingers while you're at it. Those into the water as well. And then while we're waiting for that to get finished, what we'll do is this. Dice up our onion and get our garlic ready because that pot's going to do double duty after we're done. Boiling potatoes and carrots, we're going to dump it out and then we're going to use our pot to get some of these basic ingredients ready. But in the meantime, let's get this stuff started. There we go. Then we're going to use our fancy garlic press. I like to put about three nice cloves in there. And the trick with parboiling, by the way, is you really don't boil it. You just let the water come up to a boil and then you shut everything down and you just let it sit in the hot water for about 10 minutes. That's all there is to it. removing the skins and trying not to cry from the onions. There we go. And then we're just going to give this a nice little chop. We're going to move it off to the side, and then last but not least, I'm going to take about, well, I'd say, a quarter of my bacon here. You want some bacon in it. Get a few more strips there. All right. We're going to dice this up, because this, this is going to be the onions, the bacon, and the garlic are going to be the base of this entire recipe. And same thing, I'm just going to chunk it up a little bit. Okay. 
You can also cut this when it's frozen, which actually makes it easier, but if it's fresh, you just got to deal with it. Again, it's all going to be part of the base anyway, so it'll get broken down some more, but just chunk it up a little bit. There you go. That's all there is to it. Now let's shift over to the kitchen, which right now is doing its thing. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid on that. And I'm just going to bring everything up to a boil. And then as soon as I bring it up to a boil, I'm going to shut the fire off, set my timer for exactly 10 minutes, and then I'll show you what we do next. So stand by. Next step. Take your potatoes and carrots, put them in the colander. Now we're going to go back to the pot. So we take the pot, we heat it up, and we start off by putting our bacon down there. Just give it a little help. This is one of those classic dishes where you start off with a base of bacon and onions. We'll pour the onions on. And you're going to want to cook these for, oh, I'd say about three or four minutes. And to that, I'm going to add a little bit of French thyme, any thyme you got is fine. And I'm also going to add a little bit of another thing that you all should have in your kitchen, Herbes Provence, which is the classic French herb mix. Now, the trick with this is to grill it, not kill it, right? So stir it from time to time. And you want to get your onions to look translucent and your bacon to be nice and crispy. And that'll take all about five minutes, so stand by, I'll be right back. One of the reasons that I put the herbs in with the bacon and the onions is the oil will activate them. Speaking of active, the last thing that you want to do is have your garlic ready to go, because if you put that in too early, it will burn and you don't want to burn your garlic. As you can see, it's starting to brown, and so is the base of the pot, but that's not a bad thing. I'll show you what to do with that in a minute. I just want to let the garlic now cook a little more and let the bacon and onions get just a tad more cooked. About another 30 seconds, I'd say. Then you're going to take Mr. Wine and Pour in at least a half cup, a little more if you need it. This is what they call deglazing. You want to get that stuff off the bottom of the pan. That's, that's good flavor, believe it or not. There you go. So we'll clean the pan off. and This also helps to infuse the bacon and the onions with the wine. And then once that is mostly cooked down, Next, you're going to add your shrooms. And you might have a few escapees, just gather them back up and cook those in the same pot. We'll let those cook down for just a few minutes. And then... All right, I've had these cooking for about, I'd say, uh, two minutes. And again, we're not trying to completely cook them. That'll be done in the crock pot, but I'm just trying to get them started, which as you can see, I've done. So now I'm going to take these off the stove. I'm going to put them into a big bowl, and then I'll be right back. I'll show you what to do next. This brings us back over to Mr. Colander, because what we're going to do is we're going to take our beef that's been marinating, and we're going to rinse off the marinade since it's got vinegar in it. We don't want vinegar in our stew. 
So we're just going to rinse it off like so. Okay. Drain it out. And then we're going to toss it into Mr. Bowl. And let me show you what you do next. To do next, you take a half cup of flour, and you put it on to the top of the beef. And the reason we're going to do that is because this will allow us to make our gravy without having to do a roux. It'll basically make its own gravy as it goes along. But just like with the other stews or the roux or whatever, you want to make sure that, that you mix this in pretty well. Because again, you don't, you don't want to have lumpy gravy. There we go. Make sure everybody gets a little bit. Then we come back over to Mr. Pot. We're just going to take our booth and in she goes. And the whole purpose of this part of the procedure is to braise your beef a bit. What I usually do is let that cook for, oh, I'd say about a minute, and then I give it a stir, a minute I give it a stir. So I'll be back in about, I'd say, five minutes with the next part of the procedure. Once you've braised that a little bit, we want to deglaze the pan again. So this time we'll give it a full cup of wine. This is going to help us start making our sauce. It also helps us to clean off the base of the pot. You'll notice the one thing I haven't added in here is salt. That's because you don't want to add salt until the dish is done because salt will have a tendency to do exactly the opposite of what you're trying to do right now, which is detenderize the meat. It'll make it tough. There we go. And you can see it's already starting to get a bit of a gravy in there. I think I'll pour a little bit more in there. Glug, 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 glug. Anyway, you're going to need to use about a half a bottle of wine will go into this puppy. I'm going to give it a little more of a mix. And while I've been doing all this, I've got my crock pot heating up in the background. Before we go to the crock pot, I want to continue to build this bad boy. So here's our mixture with our shrooms and our onions and our bacon. Pour all that in there. Give it a good stir. Already looks good enough to eat, doesn't it? But by letting it cook in the crock pot for about six hours, it's good. The, 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 this meat is going to be literally fork tender. And then we'll add our carrots and our taters. And, and as I said before, if, you're, if you don't like the peels, now that you've boiled them, they come right off, as you can see. What I like to do is I like to have some of them with the peels off and some of them with the peels on, what they call country style. So I'm not going to take them completely off. But I'll peel them down a bit just so you're not chewing on a lot of potato peels. If it was a red potato, I wouldn't take any of them off because those things are paper thin. There are two more. And then I'll also crank down my stove. In fact, at this point, I could turn the burner off. We don't need to cook it any further. A couple more of those, and then I'll just toss the rest of them in as is. There we go. All right. Plump. And then just give it a good stir and load it into the slow cooker. Stir this up real good. And the reason we parboiled the potatoes and the carrots is because I want them to be nice and soft, too. And if you don't do that, you could end up with little rocks. Because, again, the um, crock pot slow cooker doesn't provide a lot of heat. And so I'd like to get, at least give them a fighting chance to get nice and soft. So there you have it. Now we're going to take that over and we're going to load it into the crock pot. The moment you've all been waiting for, we're going to feed Mr. Cuisinart here. There you have it. Grab my spatula. Get as much of the juice and the gravy and all the things that make this special into the pot. There we go. So
So, where's the boof? There's the boof. Boof Bourguignon. Man cave munchie style.